Now, not to toot my own horn, but you guys know that I'm the GOAT of Fortnite FPS optimization videos. I mean, my videos have worked for all of these people, and I think this might be the last one I'll ever have to make. If you watch this entire video to the end, you're going to leave with an FPS boost and absolutely no input delay. And all we're going to be looking at is windows. Yes, we're going to be optimizing just our windows. Now, of course, you can get more performance if you check out my other videos and, you know, do your game user settings. So your config and also the actual settings within your game. But honestly, like 50% of your performance boost will come from this video here. So if it helps, drop a like, subscribe, and let's get straight into it. First things first, we're going to start in our settings. Yes, windows settings. In the system tab right here. And also, if you're on Windows 10, this is still going to work. It'll just look a little bit different. You're going to have to go and find the equivalent. But yeah, in our system settings, display. Yes, we're really going for everything here. I turn off anything I don't need, like nightlight. Um, I not 100%. I cannot confirm this is going to affect your frames. But it's something that the display driver does have to run. So better safe than sorry. HDR turn off. This can actually affect your frames, believe it or not. Scale and layout. You want to have this on whatever is recommended. For me, it's 100%. And it should be for the majority of you. Display resolution. Again, what is recommended. Although, having this on... 1920 by 1080 which is like the default standard native for the most part is usually the best option so if you have a wide like a one of those massive widescreen monitors although it's really cool you may feel as if you get some like fov increase maybe in some games i'm not too sure if it's widely applicable but because you're seeing more of the screen your display has to then communicate that to your graphics card and then there's more graphics for the graphics card to render so yeah you will get less fps so 1920 by 1080 is usually the best and if you want to lower it lower it within the game so if you want to go any lower than this display orientation I don't think I need to mention this, but yeah, landscape, uh, unless you are weird. Now on advanced display right here, you want to change your refresh rate to the highest refresh rate. Mine is 239.76. I mean, I have a 240 hertz, but uh, it works. But yeah, you'd be surprised how many people like just never change this. And actually, you know, they've got 144 hertz. They're playing on 60. Before we go any further, if you want fast gaming and to let go of lag entirely, you need to check out the Lagerfest Game Booster. It delivers ultra smooth gameplay on any device, reduces lag, minimizes pack loss, and boosts FPS. It's literally a guarantee that you're going to get faster connection, that's lower ping, maximum performance, higher FPS, and just generally better network stability, meaning no lag, all for completely free. And you don't have to take my word for it. On Fortnite right now, you can see my FPS is peaking at about, it's just going over 700, and the lowest it's going is just below 600. So we can say I probably have an average of 650 FPS right here. And now you see, if I go to the link in the description and I download Lagerfast, literally take two seconds, launch a program, fast install, it's going to detect every game I have installed, I'm going to go here, press login. I can sign up with email, message, Google is probably the easiest. I'm going to get this free trial just for signing up. Now, automatically, it's going to detect every game I have on my system. But if I go over to PC and press all, when I said it supports every game, I really meant that, as you can see, hundreds of, not even hundreds, thousands of games. But in my case, I want to try Fortnite, so I'm going to click this. All I have to do, click it. Click of a button. I'm going to press automatic. It's going to connect me to the closest sub server. And as you can see right here, it's done a scan. Now, without this, Fortnite could have been connecting me down here to 34 milliseconds, that's 34 ping. And now with this, I've got 20. Guys, that is a 14 ping difference. And all I need to do is press smart boost, and in seconds, it's gonna boost me, enable this sub server, and now I can start the game and get to playing. As you can see on Fortnite right here, I'm on double digit ping. I've got about 14 ping right here, and my FPS is peaking around 750, but it's dropping below 600. So I've probably got an average of 650 FPS. Ping isn't all this does, you know, there's an FPS boost feature. Right here, you can see it's optimizing my CPU. And I can also get a GPU overclock in the click of a button. Yes, this is super safe. It reduces lag, improves performance. All I need to do is decide which one I want. I'm going to go with high performance and enable GPU boost. Now I'm going to press save. And I can also go in here and update my drivers. Once I've done all of that, I'm going to press start booster. And already it's up my performance by 50% system wide. Oh, and before I show you the results and how much this has actually helped, for my Call of Duty players, there's something called Easy Lobby. Now, this actually works on all platforms. You've got Xbox, PlayStation, PC, even your phone. It essentially connects you to a specialized Warzone VPN server, which covers 38 countries and will put you in a bot lobby. Yes, it will get you into easier lobbies. Now, this is going to trick the skill-based matchmaking system and give you a lower KD, which allows you to get more kills and win in easier lobbies. I always just press automatic, then you just want to click change location. And again, super simple. Within seconds, I'm now ready to go. I can launch my game and I'm going to be popping off 24-7. Now you can see peaking comfortably above 700. Hardly dropping below 600 and my average is like 700. And look at my ping. Two ping. Zero ping. That's insane. My ping is like, it's non-existent anymore. This is just insane. If you want performance like this, if you want to lower your ping like this, go down to the link below, use my link and use my code fetch to download LEGO first. Moving on to Bluetooth and devices, go over to mouse, make sure to turn off this enhanced pointer position and just copy everything else here. If I go to additional mouse options, 
You lose a fine on the points options, the same thing. Yeah, ensure this is turned off. It's going to help your aim a lot. I had a few people comment on my last video and I was saying how much their aim improved after disabling this. It's, it's kind of insane. And also make sure your point speed is on the sixth option. It's kind of like in the middle, but kind of not. So yeah, six notches across. I'm moving down network and internet. I am on an ethernet. And if you're not on an ethernet, get on an ethernet cable. It's going to change your life. It isn't just going to actually lower your ping. It's going to actually improve your FPS. Yes, you're putting less stress on your network drivers. And in turn, that can slightly change your performance. And if not, it's still going to affect your response time. And if you go over to advanced network options here or network settings, and we click into our ethernet, this also works if you're wireless. More adapter options. Here, you're going to copy what I've got, but only if you're really serious about proving your internet speeds and that you're going to promise me that you'll watch this full video, which I'll try and link down below, which dives completely into this. And I only say that because there may be some little things you may need to tweak. Very, like, and that applies to like 5% of you, but again, better safe than sorry. But yeah, in that case, and in that case only, copy these. Go to configure, advanced, and also you'd want to copy everything here. I'm just going to quickly go through it. You can pause the video, but um, for the most part, again, you'll probably be good with these. But some of your systems and routers will have little quirks that may need, you know, adjusting. So again, if you really want low ping, watch my full video, copy these, and then go and check the full video out afterwards. Moving on to personalization and background, having this on a solid color option, although it doesn't look that good, is going to help. For the sake of this video, I've got like wallpaper engine, which gives me this animated wallpaper. I know a lot of people ask about that, but this is really bad for performance. And in fact, why I'm here, I'm going to give you a little freebie. If I go into my settings, if you want the best wallpaper engine settings, honestly, I never do this. But on playback, you want to pretty much set all these to pause per monitor. Cap the FPS to 30, set this to none, disable post processing, text and resolution automatic, and then put these on either low or disable, both of them. And then put shadows and volumetric lighting on either low or disabled, and also turn off reflections. Going back, dynamic lighting, I'll turn this off, definitely, both of these off. And taskbar, just get rid of as many things as you can. Like, I turn off all of these, I have my search on hide, you don't need it. You, you can just press the Windows key and start typing. Moving on to apps. In installed apps, go through here and install and uninstall anything that you don't need. There's actually probably a lot that you've just never looked into, that you've just never took the time to delete. Go through, get rid of it. Also, in startup down here, you want to disable whatever you can. Just get rid of it. This right here is for my microphone. I have my keyboard software because my keyboard doesn't light up without it. That's a really annoying thing about SteelSeries. And the timer resolution, this is a little optimization I have. And my Razer app engine as well, because again, my Razer mouse doesn't have onboard memory. So if I don't have this, my DPI is all over the place. It's kind of annoying. It's again, really annoying. You have to really think about that when you buy peripherals. A lot of people kind of, it kind of goes over their head. Uh, and that's everything. Like, obviously, I don't need Vanguard train notifications for Valorant, and I don't need WhatsApp. And I'll do so as well, go in your task manager, and if you go do startup apps here, there may be a little bit more. Sometimes, some things will hide away in here that are not showing in your window settings. So yeah, double check this as well. Just right click, disable. Now, going down to gaming, this is super important. Game Ball, have this off. No, you don't want this. Have it off. Go into graphics, optimizations for windowed games, have this on. And while you're here, you want to actually add whatever game you have. And once added, change it to high performance. You want to have it on high performance. You don't want it on Windows aside. No, you don't want it on the power saving, high performance. And you can also make sure the Windows optimizations, uh, the optimizations for window games is also enabled here. Now, the way I do this is I add all my games on high performance and add things in the background that I definitely don't need as high performance as a power saving right here. So Steam, that, so that could be Steam, Discord, your browser, things that you may have in the background. But ideally, you don't have any that open. Even just having your browser or just Discord open while gaming can have a huge, huge effect on performance, especially for games like Fortnite, which are CPU intensive. So they use a lot of CPU. You know, the Discord especially uses like 20, 10% minimum, you know? And just so you guys know the directories, uh, I'll show you all of them. For Valorant, you can see this is where it's saved. It's Valorant.exe. Anyone that plays Minecraft, it's I use, well, this is Bad Lighting Client. So actually, it may not apply for you, but this is Luna Client, Bad Lion. I feel like most people aren't either of these. Fortnite, it's a bit of a harder one to find. It's in, for you guys, it'll probably be in your program files. For me, I've got it saved on a completely different drive. But yeah, binaries, Win64, Fortnite Client dash Win64-Shipping.exe. It's not just called Fortnite.exe. So don't be confused. Roblox is also a bit confusing. It's Roblox Player Beta.exe. You can find them here. And going back to gaming, if you go to game mode, this also you want to turn on. Game mode on, game bar off. And everything else, honestly, if you go to privacy security, there are some things you kind of do want to get rid of. Voice activation, I turn this off. Camera, if you don't use it, turn it off. And honestly, pretty much all of these here, you want to disable. Obviously, be careful with things like documents. You do want some programs to be ac to access things like your downloads and documents folders. But as an example, things like radio control access, you definitely don't need on. Oh, and actually the final thing here, Windows Update. 
I would update to the latest version of Windows um, as of this video being uploaded. It's it's relatively stable. But once you've done that, I would pause updates for five weeks. Don't worry about them unless you hear of some kind of vulnerability. Usually though, better to stay on a version that you know is stable and, and isn't having any performance issues. And for the folk that are not yet on Windows 11, if you do have the option, definitely go to it. It's, it's far more optimized for performance right now. All right, now moving on to some things that are outside of those settings. If you right click here and go to system, advanced system settings, I guess they are in the Windows. Uh, it's just easier to get them here. Underneath performance, go to settings and you want to use adjust for best performance or it's easier to be honest. So just untick everything besides show thumbnails instead of icons and smooth edges on screen fonts. Just press apply. Okay. And now probably the most important thing I'll show in this video, power plan settings. So you want to type in edit power plan. I, I didn't really explain that there. Turn off both of these, go to power options. In fact, you may need to turn off both of them again, but go to power options and you want to make sure I'm going to custom power plan, but you want to make sure you're on ultimate performance at the very least. Some of you probably only have power saver, especially if you're on a laptop. You probably have this one if you're on a laptop potentially as well. You may have high performance, but you want to be on ultimate performance. Now to get this, I'll try and remember to put it down below. If not, someone please comment it and I'll pin the comment, but you can literally just search in Google ultimate performance power plan. You'll find it here, the little code you need to copy, but I usually just go on this website, how to geek. Honestly, I can't imagine how many users I've got over to this website now. Um, I mention it in every Windows optimization video. But yeah, you want to copy this, copy, you know, press your Windows key. You want to type in PowerShell like so, run this as administrator. And in here, you want to control V or press right click and, you know, paste and press enter. And what that's going to do is it's going to say this. And if you go back into your power options, it's not going to show straight away. You're going to be like, okay, um, where is it? Now you have to close it, go back. And if I go here now, now I have two. I, I didn't need to, but I have two now. Two automobile performance modes. You want to click this. There you go. It's enabled. But I'd also recommend you double check, go into change plan settings. Ideally, turn this to never as I recommended and change advanced power options or power settings. Go here, scroll down to processor power management, open this and minimum and maximum processor state. Set these both to 100% or double check that they're both on 100%. And to wrap the video up, we're not far off now. The last two things we're going to do, we're going to do a little disk cleanup. You're going to want to do this on both of your drives or all of your drives. Just press OK. And it's going to just clean up your disks right here. Super, super simple. These are the settings I have. Just select them all and press OK. And then you want to go to run and type in percent, temp, percent. It's OK. And you can press Control A to select all of these or just go like this. But yeah, Control A, select them all. Right click, delete. And that's everything. If you got this far, drop a like, subscribe. Check the bottom of the description. I usually leave something there. And if you comment it, you could win something. But only for my lows. You had to have got this far.